Brendan Frey, I must confess, I have no idea at all of what his work as a machine learning specialist who writes papers on probabilistic inference, graphical models, computer vision, and iterative decoding actually comes to. So I seize the opportunity to get you up here, Brendan, to explain it to us all. Sure. Brendan Frey. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. So uh, when I was invited to give a talk, I, I was wondering myself what, uh, you know, what I could say to a, a such a general audience as, uh, as this. Um, but I realized there are two, um, two, two ideas I want to convey to you. First of all, um, I'm not going to talk about all those different things that Moses just mentioned. That's uh, some kind of a technical description of what I do that uh, made its way into his hands somehow. Uh, what I'm going to do is tell you about two simple things. The first, of, the first is, uh, let's see if this works. Oh. Need to, uh. The first one, the first one, the first thing I want to tell you about is what is a learning machine, right? That's the subject of my talk. So what could be simpler than that, tell you what I'm going to talk about. Uh, but the second thing I want to tell you about is that we're actually on the cusp, really, right now, Actually, this year, we're on the cusp of a change in this field that's going to impact all of your lives in the decades to come. So let me tell you about those two uh, ideas. So learning machines, what are they? Well, I looked at Webster. I figured that's a good place to start, right? It's appropriate for everybody. Uh, so a machine is a constructed device or a living organism that performs a task, and an example would be a military machine. Uh, and a second definition, which I think is quite interesting, is an apparatus used to produce stage effects. So, so what I thought was interesting about this uh, is, it, is it, uh, there's a connotation there of some sort of magic or mystery. Right? That's what a stage effect is all about, producing a show for the audience. So a machine is not just simply a, a device that you can understand or you can write down a mathematical equation to describe or that's easy to build. I think a device, there's some, some sort of magic behind it. In other words, you're kind of surprised to see what it can do. All right, what about learning? Uh, well, you know what learning is, but it's knowledge or skill acquired by experience. Okay, so put these two words together and uh, you can see what a learning machine is. Okay, so it's basically a device that we construct, or it could be a, a device that's evolved biologically, but it's a device that has the ability to learn from experience. All right, so I thought I'd show you a simple example of uh, a challenging learning, machine learning problem in my field. Uh, I'm just going to walk you through it, it'll take you about a minute. Uh, and, and it's a bit of a fictional example. I'm working with Microsoft India on an interesting project involving uh, rural India. Suppose there's a calamity, so this is the, the part that I'm kind of making up, uh, but uh, you can imagine there's a calamity where you have uh, villages, so these white spots here are villages in rural India, and they need to access uh, supplies because of, say, a flood or something like that. Okay, so um, the idea is to select a subset of villages where we'll deposit the supplies and all the other villages will access those supplies. All right? So in a sense, we can get rid of the uh, topology now, the terrain, and just look at it in this abstract form. Those are the villages, and the goal is to select a subset of villages where we'll deposit the supplies so that all the other villages have easy access. So that's the task of machine learning. Machine learning is to take a problem like this, it's very important practically, and have a device that can actually figure out where to put these supplies so as to maximize the utility of these uh, villagers. So now I'll show you uh, the results of an algorithm that we developed that was published in Science uh, last year. Uh, so that was fast. <laughs> okay, so that was the algorithm in action. The algorithm works by exchanging little packets of information between these potential locations of where the supplies could be put until a good solution emerges for where the centers should be. Okay, and so you can see this, these messages being exchanged back and forth between these villages until it converges to a solution. We drop off the supplies here, here, and here, and these villages would access this set of supplies, and so on. Um, so how does a machine learn? So, I, so I've, I hope I've conveyed to you that this is a pretty fundamental task, right? Sorting out information, making sense of information, allowing us to do things that we couldn't do without uh, this device. So, so I'm just going to uh, give you a little peek under the hood of how machine learning works. Uh, what we do is we introduce parameters. The, the machine or this device has parameters inside of it. These are variables. You can think of them as control knobs. 
So dozens and dozens of control knobs that can be adjusted, okay? And they're in adjusted in such a way so as to store information about the experience that the machine has. Okay, so in that previous example I showed you, there might be control knobs that say how suitable a particular village is as a central location for another village, and that control knob would be varied just based on experience, say how, many, how often villagers take the route between the two uh, villages, things like that. So a few cool examples of the past. Notice I'm including Google and Microsoft Search as the past. Um, uh, let's start with this one over here. This is one of the first uh, good demonstrations of machine learning capability. Uh, this is a system that recognizes handwritten digits, okay? And it's actually used, at least in the US Postal Service, to recognize zip codes on envelopes. Okay, and that's a machine learning device that was trained by being shown a whole bunch of pairs of handwritten digits plus which digit it was. So here's a three, here's a two, and so on. That's how it was trained. So it learned from that experience, adjusted its parameters, its control knobs, and now it can actually identify uh, digits that it's never seen before, these ones here. Um, uh, this is an example of a speech recognition system. So this is one of the big successes of machine learning is speech recognition. Uh, <clears throat> you might not think that you like using a speech recognition uh, uh, service on your laptop or your, or your uh, Palm device, but, but it's an example where we can actually develop machine learning systems that learn to recognize human speech. And another exciting area is robotics. Now, Google and Microsoft Search, they use a lot of machine learning basically to guide your search. So when you type a keyword in to Google, uh, there's machine learning algorithms over at Google that have uh, put together the information so as to interpret your keywords and figure out what you're trying to access. <clears throat> All right, so the other, uh, the other thing I wanted to touch on was examples of biological machine learning devices, because those are the ones we're most familiar with. Uh, the most obvious one is the brain, okay? I, I won't say much about that uh, for a little while, but basically, of course, the brain learns from experience. You see things, you learn what their use, usefulness is, and then based on that experience, you can make predictions in the future and act on those predictions. But here are some other surprising examples. Uh, here's the tree of life that we saw earlier in a slightly different form. Um, and if you think about all these different organisms and these organisms evolving, what they're doing is learning to cope with their environment. So when, an organ when there's a mutation in the DNA of an organism, uh, the new version may actually be more successful. So it's adapting to its environment. It's learning about its environment. Um, all right, so that's the past. Now I, I want to say something. It's a bit of a mea culpa. I'm not very impressed with past examples of machine learning, <laughs> okay? And the reason is, is that they don't actually achieve what you might hope to see in a learning system uh, when you consider even the most simple tasks that a human can perform. So a human can look at a scene, such as a bunch of faces, and rec recognize certain faces, identify faces. Or it can see a, look at a scene with multiple objects, identify the objects, maybe avoid those objects. We don't have good machine learning algorithms for doing that. Except right now, people are developing these methods. So I'm going to give you uh, briefly just a sample of a few interesting uh, results that people have obtained recently. Uh, this is one that was produced in my group. Um, so I mentioned this problem of looking at a scene and interpreting what's going on. Well, this is, this is a fun example. So we have a machine learning device that takes as input a single image. It takes that single image, so it's, it doesn't look at any other images. Rem remember that. This is the only input to this machine learning device. And based on this image, it looks for common patterns. Now, when you see that image, you probably see, well, there's ocean and there's a little girl. Uh, of course, you've seen lots of other pictures of oceans and little girls, so you've actually got a lot of pre-training, a lot of previous knowledge. But this machine learning device has never seen those other pictures. It's seen this one and only picture. And this is what it does. Okay, first of all, the device replicates this image twice in its memory, and then it tries to sort out what the two different objects are in the scene and it works it out like that. So it's actually able to figure out all by itself that there's two parts to this scene, the little girl in the ocean. Now, what's really surprising is that it's actually figured out what the ocean might look like behind the little girl. That's imagination. The machine learning device figured this out for itself. It figured out that based on what it's seen here in this image, it's unlikely that these little white blobs would suddenly terminate at the boundary of the little girl. So the device has figured out that really it ought to extend those waves behind the girl to make a scene that looks more natural and consistent with those parts of the ocean that it can see. Uh, here's another example from Jeffrey Hinton, who's a uh, member of the Neural Computation Adaptive Perception Program at CIFAR. Uh, in this case, he's looking at documents, 
And what this is over here, it's again, it's a machine learning device, and I won't go into the details, but his uh, area of research really focuses on neural representations of data. So actually thinking about there being artificial neurons that could plausibly uh, correspond to the ones in our brains. And we present the system with thousands of documents, and for each document, a certain pattern of activity fires up here in this word count part. And then boom, 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 there's various things that happen in this neural network, which again, I won't go into in detail. But basically, the neural network transfers this information into a simple code that consists of two numbers. So it takes a document with maybe 10,000 words, maps it to a single, uh, sorry, to two real numbers that represent that document. And you can now plot the documents. So for each document, this, uh, this neural network maps it to two real numbers, and you get a point in this 2D space. So here's one of the real numbers on the x-axis and the other real numbers on the y-axis. So you get a point. And it turns out if you look at the content of the documents, the, the uh, machine learning device has pulled them apart into semantic categories. So these uh, documents here have to do with energy markets. These ones have to do with interbank markets. Notice they're close to the energy markets uh, documents in this space, okay? So the machine learning devices recognize that both of them have to do with markets, but it's distinguished between energy markets and interbank markets, and so on. Um, and I'll wrap up my examples here with uh, one last example from my group, which is video analysis. So it's akin to that example I showed you of the little girl. The input to the system is a video, just a short video clip, which I'm showing you here, repeating over and over. And now what I'll show you is, again, a peek under the hood of this machine learning system and you can see how it interprets the data. So it interprets that as three objects, the background scene, and then these two people. And again, notice that when one occludes the other in the original input, the, al the algorithm is able to infer what's going on behind that, front, that object that was in the front. So again, it's interpreting the scene and trying to predict what might be going on behind the scene. <clears throat> All right, so I'll just close with a couple comments on the future. I mentioned this cusp. So what do I mean by that? Well, here's a prediction for you. So I predict that the beginning of this century will be viewed as the time when learning machines became capable of human-level learning. All right, so why do I believe that? Well, first, let's just look at the different threads that have come together, all right, to, to uh, lead us to this uh, area of uh, learning machines. Uh, old areas like prediction, mathematics, physics, and engineering. Newer areas like biology, statistics, and very recently, computers. Really, in this plot, computers are just the last instant on the plot, right? The x-axis here is the year, time. All right, so that's the first thing I wanted to show you. The second one, and this surprised me, is that this year, 2008, my computer's memory has caught up with mine in terms of the amount of information it can store. So again, we have year on the x-axis and memory on the y-axis, okay? And there's the human brain at one trillion of these control knobs. That's how many control knobs it has. And here's the computer over time. And in 2008, this year, we now have computers that have the same memory as a human brain. Uh, we can also say that for throughput in terms of computing speed, it turns out to be the same thing. If you plot computing speed on the y-axis here and plot computing speed of computer versus human brain, again, 2008, we've converged to the same speed. And so that's why I think we're going to see uh, convergence now in these learning algorithms, and they'll actually re reach the capability of learning the same way that humans do. Uh, so I'll skip over these examples and just conclude again by reciting this prediction. All right, thanks for your attention.